This tutorial is sponsored by the 3D Coloring Book, a project specifically designed to help empower artists who are struggling with texturing in Substance Painter and to help show you that anyone can create beautiful pieces of art with just a little bit of practice and guidance. To instantly gain access to hundreds of pre-made professional level models and hours of high quality tutorials, click the link in the description and begin your journey today. Hi, I am Sebastian or Robin and I am VFX artist. Recently, I made rework of my old shield shader inspired by Overwatch and was asked to show you how I made this. So straight to the point. This shield consists of three elements, main shield, refraction shader behind and destructible shield which is separate mesh with an animation. To create this kind of effect, you need to create custom shader. For shaders, I am using Amplify Shader Editor, but everything can be achieved also in Shader Graph on Unreal Material Editor because it's based on the same shader language. On the screen you can see breakdown on my art station where I cover my approach step by step. And this, this is how shader looks like. This can be pretty intimidating when you first look at, but no worries. I will explain parts of the shader one by one. First of all, let's create proper mesh for our shield. Overall shape is up to you, as long as your UV stays flat. Similar to this. What's important now, we need to paint the edges of this mesh with vertex color. And we will use this data to define edge thickness of the shield based on gradient we created. Pros of this approach is that glow on the edges will match perfectly with your mesh and there is no need for additional texture. So with mesh created, now in Unity, let's start placing nodes. Let's create mask for glowing edges based on vertex paint we did in 3D software. Reading information from vertex color is super easy and few simple math calculation will give us nice control over the edge thickness and intensity. Vertex color is our input. If you painted it exactly like I did, invert, you, invert values using one minus. Then I saved uh, this as a local variable, but actually never use this value elsewhere. So you can skip this node. Next. Subtract is used as thickness controller and multiply as intensity controller. And this is how this values looks like on the mesh. Well, I'm sorry. Here to the debug input on the shader. And this is how edge mask looks on the mesh. Now it's time to make depth intersection when our shield collides with any opaque objects. This way, we prevent player from noticing clipping with word and make feature from it. First, we need to create a depth mask behind the shield using depth fade. Then, using LERP, just as levels in Photoshop, for example, adjust mask to match edge thickness, one minus to invert the mask and saturate to prevent values from exceeding zero to one range. And now, Let's combine these two together. I use another multiply after depth mask to match intensity of the edges and intersections. And then make control over the final line using LERP as before. Worth mention that register and get locker variables are portal nodes. They help keeping graph organized and thus not changing the result. And let's see how this combine looks on the mesh. Using debug input in shader. And now you can see nice intersections when I collide with 
objects in the scene. Okay, so before the next part, let's create custom tiling property. Just save vector2 as a local variable and then use it in every texture coordinate as tiling. It is used to unify tiling over multiple textures and to check center of a mesh in any tiling you want. Now let's create pulse effect. Using global tiling input, modify texture coordinate. If you want to find center of the UV space, you need to multiply each axis with minus and a half and then add the result to the UVs. Then use length to create radial gradient from the texture coordinates. Save a variable and like in the comment below, create radial glow from the center of the shield and do some minor visual tweaks. Back to the pulse effect, add time for the animation, multiplier and scene are connected because as we increase multiplier we change sign function period, subtract and multiply to define circle size and as usual we register local variable. And this is how this effect looks on the mesh. like this and also a uh, radial glow here challenging part is to make hex flickering effect as overwatch shields tend to have to achieve this i have created custom texture coordinate in substance designer in substance designer uh, i have created uh, tile generator from polygon shape uh, to get a custom texture coordinate using float fill to position node and this would be uh, our first first uh, texture and uh, second texture is uh, made from uh, two uh, tile generators first with actual hexes with luminance uh, randomized in a red channel and hex outline with little blur in a green channel. Now we are going to use this map to randomize luminance of each hex on a shield. Here I've added a texture we've created in a Substance Designer with zero Mip map level to not lose uh, quality when we are looking from afar. Then masked uh, only RNG channels and created a custom function for us for the sake of uh, clarity of the shader. So inside this function, we have inputs, texture coordinates. Uh, if uh, there is non texture coordinates plugged, uh, this will use texture coordinates and uh, speed uh, in x, x axis uh, goes to the panner, which offsets uh, texture over the UVs. And then noise generator do the job for us. Uh, after that, I always saturate the result to avoid some weird graphical bugs and here's output and uh, in the shader LARP for the levels and also register local variable to use them in main part of the shader. Okay, now I guess is the most confusing part because here we are going to combine all previous functionalities. During substance work we have created two textures. Base texture is used here. You need to split R and G channel to use this information separately. Hexes multiply with random flickering effect and another multiply for the hex intensity. Hex outline in other way multiply with pulse effect uh, and then max these two together using max node. Another max to combine uh, this hex effect 
with uh, edges and intersection then add center glow uh, to the effect I have forgot to explain uh, this crack effect so I uh, showed it here it's pretty straightforward uh, so you can just copy or skip it then if you want to create uh, dissolve effect for the shield just uh, use uh, any noise and step it and then multiply then I use saturate uh, before the opacity input to emission input take pulse effect and multiply it with HDR color. Do the same with edges and intersection and crack effect. Then max these three together using two max nodes and then yet another max uh, with standard color to, uh, to add color to any not masked uh, part of the shader. And this is pretty much everything. I realized that reading someone else's shader can be messy and the amount of note may confuse. So everything I talk about is on my art station step by step. There I am showing also how I made refraction and destruction of the shield. So if you are interested you can check it out. But for now, thank you for watching and if you have any question, reach me out on Twitter or art station. Bye bye.